You may think that you know enough about the USA, but it is very likely that what you learn in this episode today, you will never be able to forget for the rest of your life. So if the USA really cares about the people of India and if it really wants India to be its friend, it is very important for Americans to finally understand the 10 main reasons why many Indians dislike the USA and to immediately put an end to the horrible things that Americans are doing to Indians. Reason 1. Indians and in particular Indian women deserve an apology for the sexual disgust and hatred that the 37th President of the United States, Richard Nixon, showed toward them. The former American president said, Undoubtedly, the most unattractive women in the world are the Indian women. He added, The most sexless, nothing, these people. I mean, people say, what about the black Africans? Well, you can see something, the vitality there. I mean, they have a little animal-like charm. But God, those Indians. Heck, pathetic, heck. Now read this. While talking to the US National Security Advisor, Henry Kissinger, the former American president said this about Indians. To me, they turn me off. How the hell do they turn other people on, Henry? Tell me. And yes, it must be pointed out that the former American president's sexual repulsion and racist views toward Indians had an impact on his foreign policy as well. Point two. Over and over again, Indian dignitaries have faced humiliation and embarrassment at American airports or by American officials. The list includes India's former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, India's former defense minister, George Fernandez, and even Mira Shankar, who served as India's ambassador to the United States. So how would the USA react if India did the same to the American ministers, its former presidents or ambassadors? Point three. Take a look at this man, Henry Kissinger, who served as America's national security advisor. He is a hero and a role model for many Americans. He was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Now let's try to understand the mentality of this American hero. Please pay attention, this is an official government website of the United States. And this is an actual conversation between Kissinger, President Nixon and the American president's assistant. Read the kind of words they are using for Indians and the first female Prime Minister of India. Not just once, this derogatory word for the then India's Prime Minister was used multiple times in this conversation. And of course, that's not everything. Apart from these unacceptable words, Kissinger also referred to Indians as a scavenging people. Not only that, the United States, which defines itself as a democracy, supported Pakistan's murderous military dictatorship against a fellow democracy, India. According to Professor Gary J. Bass, the former American president and his national security advisor staunchly supported the military regime in Pakistan as it killed hundreds of thousands of Bengalis with 10 million refugees fleeing into neighboring India. Yes. Indians haven't forgotten the American role in this genocide. Now, please, consider this. Can you imagine an Indian contributing to mass killings in the West and then receiving the Nobel Peace Prize? But of course, Kissinger was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Now ask yourself, how does this rotten and racist system reflect the so-called European or Western values that we are so proud of? Point 4. During the 1971 India-Pakistan conflict, when India was fighting a genocidal military regime in Pakistan, the USA sent a nuclear-powered and nuclear-weapon-capable naval task force to the Bay of Bengal, which intimidated and threatened India. India and Indians can never forget that. Not only that, it was later revealed that the USA even wanted to deceitfully brand India publicly as an aggressor. Point 5. Centuries of European colonialism pushed the rich land of Bharat into poverty. But after India kicked out the European colonial criminals, it worked hard to reclaim its lost glory. But when India became the first nation to send a satellite into orbit around Mars on its first attempt, the New York Times published this cartoon. Many Indians felt that this cartoon mocked India and reflected the American media's hatred and colonial attitude. Indians love Isro. They are emotionally attached to it. Many of them were deeply hurt and haven't forgotten this cartoon until today. Of course, the USA continues to suffer from massive inequality and poverty, but it doesn't mean that America shouldn't have a space agency, right? The New York Times could have done a better job. Why publish a cartoon that appears to mock a nation that was looted by Europeans to get richer? 
All I can say here is that Americans shouldn't forget that India is a civilizational nation and the USA is a colonial experiment on stolen land. So here I recommend two videos to Americans that can help them heal and understand their own country better as well as learn how the USA got richer through slavery, colonialism and dirty money. Point 6. Many Indians in the USA haven't forgotten that Dot Busters, a largely white, largely young gang that embarked on a campaign of vandalism, violence and murder designed to terrorize Jersey City's Hindu population and to drive them out of the city. Even a local newspaper in the USA published a letter from the Dot Busters, an organization vowing to rid the community of Indians. Remember that the dot here refers to the racist and Hindu-phobic term dot hats, as well as the tilak or bindi that many Hindus and Indians were. Indians and Hindus were chased and hunted by white, xenophobic Americans, many of whom are Christian nationalists. As a result, many Indians and Hindu women, out of fear and in order to save their lives, stopped wearing sari and their bindi. They were facing forced and painful Americanization. Yes, in the USA, as this study mentioned, anti-Indian violence was a way of life, but Indians know that in many ways it still is. Point 7. India is not just upset about why the sophisticated US fighter aircraft, the F-16s, are with Pakistan, but also because US officials have visited the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and the American government has even funded or participated in the projects in the POK. Not only that, the US ambassadors to Pakistan have even referred to the region as Azad Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, that's the official Twitter handle of the American embassy in Pakistan. You can read this and check the date here. These actions from the USA deeply hurt India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Point 8. Many Indians love the USA and Americans, but they are heartbroken when India haters, Hindu haters or white supremacists are given huge platforms or support in the US to release their venom against India. Remember this journalist? Remember what he said about India and British colonialism? I responded to his remarks in this video. Remember this professor? Remember what she said about Indians? I responded to her arrogance in this video. There are many universities in the USA where Hindus are not even allowed to be hired as full-time faculty members and administrators. Not only that, the Southern Baptist Convention, which is the largest Protestant church board in the USA, released thousands of booklets to distribute in its 40,000 churches with extremely objectionable and Hinduphobic content. The booklet mentioned these words. Listen carefully. More than 900 million people lost in the hopeless darkness of Hinduism and demonic powers lie behind Hindu gods. It also mentioned that Hindus live under the power of Satan and it even talked about the darkness in their Hindu hearts that no lamp can dispel. Yes, the largest Protestant church board in the United States officially released booklets claiming that Mumbai is a city of spiritual darkness because of Hindus and Satan has retained his hold on Kolkata through Kali and other gods and goddesses of Hinduism. It's time for Christ's salvation to come to Kolkata. During that time, Bill Clinton was the president, their so-called liberal president. Hindus, Indians and Hindu gods were openly abused and insulted by the largest Protestant church body in the USA, which today has more than 47,000 churches. This American church has millions of followers. But how many of them wanted to come out and protest? Or did they just agree with the church too? This should have caused an earthquake in the world of journalism. But of course, not many cared. The victims were Hindus and Christian nationalism is just the way of life in the Western world, right? Should Hindus and India forget this historic insult and humiliation? After learning all this, are you still surprised that Americans not only attacked or abused Indians in the USA, but also in other countries? <laughs> it seems clear where it all comes from or originates from. Point 9. In broad daylight, these Christians in America have declared that they want to replace the culture and religion of Indians with theirs. They are openly operating from the USA and millions of Americans are just silently watching or supporting this. Why? In the USA, those who work on the radical task of total evangelization of the world have been glorified and are considered national heroes. America, these Christian fundamentalists and supremacists hang out with your presidents and get funded by your government. You honor them by giving them your highest awards. Why America? Why? Why are you funding the cultural genocide of the world and killing our precious global diversity? Point 10. America, this is the information age and you can't keep everyone in the dark forever. 
Indians are waking up. They are seeing your dirty truth. They see and understand your hypocrisy, whether it is about oil, COVID vaccines, or anything else. America, when your leaders threaten India with sanctions or blackmail, Indians watch you. America, when you preach democracy but misuse global institutions undemocratically, Indians watch you. And when you commit war crimes globally, Indians watch you. If Americans really love India, and if the USA is truly serious about its friendship with India, then apologizing to India and Indians for all its wrongdoings and immediately putting an end to them can be a good start. As a well-wisher of the US, all I can say is that it is an opportunity the USA shouldn't miss so that the relations between the two democracies can flourish. See you again.